Here we're going to show how easy it is to add equipment on the Ag Leader Integra screen display. At our top right corner, we'll see the wrench, and we'll go ahead and press that button. And we'll see equipment at the top right as well. And we have vehicles. We can choose one right now uh, when we do uh, our configuration setup, but we'll add one here real quick. Choose tractor. Something easy, JD. Call it a 55. And our rear drawbar is from our rear axle to our hitch point. We'll mark that as 46. And our enter vehicle name. We they'll just take the the first uh, make and model and put them together. But if we want to edit this and make it longer, we can do so as well. Okay, so we have it right there, and we can adjust the offsets here, uh, hitch antenna, and uh, dial it in a little bit better for uh, mapping. Our implement we're going to do here, for example, we're going to put together, we'll do an application. We'll call this uh, and it's going to attach the rear draw bar, and we choose the hitch to the implement axle distance, and that's for uh, mapping purposes also, so it gets the right uh, angle and offset. Let's say it's 15 feet to the axle in the back from our hitch point. And now we get to choose what application we're putting down. Um, for example, we do have a strip tool module hooked up to this display right now. So we can choose gran granular application. And we can do a strip till. And we can pick one from the modules we already have listed in here. If it's going to be the same, let's say uh, you're using the same... Um, air card or something uh, for different tools, different drills. Maybe you have a hole drill and then uh, then a disc drill set up and you can uh, configure it as such. For this example we will choose a new controller. We're going to choose the direct command and go down here to gran granular strip till control and we want to name it something. Um, it defaults as a, being a direct strip tail module and such, but if we put um, a name to it, we can better distinguish it between uh, different modules that we have uh, have throughout the farm. It makes it a little bit easier. For this example, we will call it And here's where we get to choose the capacity of our bins and how many there are. And we can choose it uh, to say whatever we want to be uh, as being front hopper, um, bin one, bin two, so forth. We'll call it And we can choose ounces, pints, quarts, gallons, bushels, or cubic feet. Um, I, I feel that uh, given capacity for different carts and so forth, cubic feet uh, results in uh, a better uh, terminology as being uh, more accurate as far as capacity. We'll say this one does... Uh, hmm. We'll, we'll just put a number in there. I'm not sure. Not real big there. 30 feet, that's fine. And now we would do a hitch to the application point of where our, our uh, product is being dispersed onto 
the, the ground. For this example, we'll put it in as being uh, 11 feet. Okay. Additional equipment. If you do fertilizer, you can use the opti crop sensor to add or, or take away different fertilizer depending on uh, different uh, field uh, conditions. Or green, uh, okay. It provides a rear hitch. We don't have one, so we don't have to worry about that. And we can change the name if we want. Okay. You'll see our controller is listed here. And if we don't like it, we can change it. The name of it. And now we actually have to come up with a configuration for this new um, setup that we have. We are doing an application for it. We'll select our vehicle. That being what we entered in. We'll select our Case 2300. And I don't have radar hooked up to this. So we'll just use the display GPS for now. And we'll have it saved as such. Okay, and there it is. We need to adjust things. We can go in here, hit controller setting, and change it if we are running a PWN um, drive on that. And this is important if you uh, are running an air cart, it's, it, it is a good idea to have low fan speed shut off. That way if something should happen like, uh, oh, your fan shuts off for uh, some odd reason, you hit the remote on the uh, console and you turn it off by accident, it will shut off so you don't plug everything up on an air system. Okay, we'll just enter it as such. And to adjust our lead in and lead out times, our look ahead is where we would change it here. If you're running two ranks onto the toolbar, you'll probably want to turn that on quite a bit sooner. Um, it's a good idea to uh, actually do some digging or samples to figure out where it needs to be turned on at. And take the time to do that so that uh, it uh, looks proper when you're planting. Speed input, we can, if we need to uh, do some uh, testing, we can put in a manual speed and type it in as such and then it'll give us that reading. Equipment settings are for uh, the rate look ahead, um, when you're doing prescriptions more or less, you'll change that there and our auxiliary input is where our switch box meets and if you're running quite a few modules or sections you can put that in here to change that around a bit to uh, make it more user friendly if you're if you want to shut off certain certain things throughout the field on the fly instead of having to come in here and click on things and we'll turn that back to GPS Oops. Oh, I forgot. If you need to enter in products, you do so here. Um, but you can also enter it in on your main screen as well. There's our new configuration we put in here. select the product here um, or you can choose new and put it in as as it is right now and they'll add it to that database in the products for example we're just going to put in uh, um, you can use this as a seating or application I prefer setting it up as application and entering in as um, as what I need to do here let's say we're doing some weed here uh, new event Controlling the product, just pounds. And we have to set our conveyor rate setting to get that to work for us. 
and we'll do that right in the settings area here. We'll choose the product density and the conveyor rate. Uh, when you do this, you need to have a number in. Um, any number will do. I mean, uh, usually it's going to be like a 0 .025 or or something small, you know, depending on. Uh, might even be like that, but choose something somewhat small when you start off with, and then you can do a static calibration. Let it run its course. Channel one we're doing and dispense out, let's say. We don't know quite what's going on. Let's use like 10 pounds. And we'll go through target rate. Let's say we're putting down 120 pounds. And then you'll go ahead and run the unit. Obviously it's not gonna work because we're not running right now. But that'll give us a baseline of our conveyor rate. And do that at least three times. To, to to build up a good uh, a good idea of what's going on. And if you do have uh, either a scale on your cart or a certain way out that you, you know how much product is going in there, you can do an infield calibration and that will give you a lot better, better reading. Okay. Now we're set up just like that. We can put in different rates here. container uh, since we did cubic um, cubic feet there on our area it takes the product density of the wheat and gives us how many pounds we can put into that uh, cubic foot there